So if you guys think you got what it takes to whip my ass in Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 3, you can find me on PlayStation Network at SKG9000. You're going to look for me. I'm going to be Han, and I'm going to be whipping your ass. What's up, guys? It is Corey from Super Comic Guru 9000, and the time has come for a brand new Naruto fighting game. In a long line of Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm games, we have just gotten the next entry, the next numbered entry. This is Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 3, and it's probably the best Naruto fighting game that's ever been made, but is it completely flawless? Find out in my review. But easily the biggest selling point of this game is the story mode, and this one's a really big one. Since it's the third one in the series, it is actually going to be uh, going with what's going on in the anime series, and even some stuff that's been taking place a little bit later in the manga series. So you're going to be involved in the Fourth Great Ninja War, you're going to see a lot of your favorite characters in their war outfits, you're going to see Edo Tensei characters, and since this is the Ultimate Ninja Storm series, you're going to have really intense boss battles. Now, I just want to talk first about when you start up your Ultimate Adventure, it really starts off with a bang, it has got some incredible atmosphere. It starts out actually with a QB attacking the village, and this is actually before uh, Naruto is even born at this point. And everything here is just built up really nicely. They give you a lot of great shots of the village. Like I said, there's, uh, there's this music playing that actually was not in the original anime series. They have brand new music for this game, and it fits really, really well. Some places, it's actually a little bit better than the anime, to be perfectly honest. And what opens in this game is you actually take control of the fourth Hokage, and then you get to take control of the third Hokage as he fights against the QB. And this whole sequence is just really awesome. It builds up. You're like, oh my gosh, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. It's better than the anime. Everything, the action, the characters, it's just so over the top, and it looks so nice. But things go downhill a little bit more when we uh, finish up with that battle. Since we finish up with the flashback, we immediately cut away to our main character, Naruto. And you think this is when things start to pick up. And this is when the uh, biggest problem of the story mode unfortunately comes into play. Now, like I said, the boss battles are so much fun to play because they're just really fun to look at. They have a lot of great QTE sequences and they're just fun to play. But when you're not playing boss battles, do you know what you're doing in story mode? You are walking. You are walking for maybe 10 feet at a time and then watching a cutscene. This, my friends, is not an ultimate adventure. This is simply just slogging through and trying to make your way to the boss battles. To be fair, there are some small side missions that take place in Ultimate Adventure where you can get things such as bonus cards you can use online and even some items. But even then, it's bare bones. You can even talk to a few people, but they never have anything interesting to say. They'll tell you about the weather, or how things are going in the war right now. That's pretty much it. Now, that's not to say the Ultimate Adventure is completely awful without just the boss battles. There are a few little instances they actually give us some brand new stuff we've never seen in these games before. We actually have some third-person action sequences where you get to take control of Sasuke fighting against some samurai, which at first I was like, oh man, this is going to be fun, but ultimately it results in just walking down a hallway, beating up some guys, hitting circle over and over and over. It's really not that intricate, but it looks okay. You even get a section where you get to play as Darui at the beach, and you get to fight against all of these Zetsu clones and even Kakuzu, and then eventually Ginkaku and Kinkaku. So... It definitely covers all the stuff that's in the war. The only problem is, it's going to take forever to get through it. And the whole Ultimate Adventure takes about 8 hours to complete. And I know, because I played through the whole thing. And for the first half, I was mostly watching the cutscenes. But when I finally started getting bored with them, I was like, Okay, am I really just going to have to walk down another freaking path? Watch another damn cutscene? Yes, I am. So I just started pressing start and skipping all the cutscenes by the end. However, when you get towards the end, things start to pick up a little bit more. Madara actually appears in this game, and he has a big part to play in the story mode. And you get to fight against him, you get to fight against the Edo Kages, which are not fucking playable, by the way. And the last bit of the game has probably one of the most intense boss battles I've ever seen. The biggest problem with it, however, is it's cheap as fuck. I died against the last two bosses, I swear to God little over 15 to 20 times, and the worst part about it is when you restart, they have these little cutscenes that play that you cannot skip during the battles, and it takes forever to get through some of these things. One quick example is in the uh, second to last final battle, you're fighting against Madara, you're Tsunade with all the other Kages fighting against him. When I started this battle, I had almost zero health. I had about 50% health left. And I was doing everything I could, just pounding every button, using every combination, dodging all the attacks and everything. And there'd be times I was just about to beat Madara and I only had like just a little bit of health left. And then he'd do something cheap, like hit me with just one little freaking fireball out of the corner of my eye that I could not see. And, you know, it's not horrible. It's just something you need to practice at. But it's fucking 
irritating. God, I'm, I'm actually getting angry thinking about it. But that's not the one that really pisses me off. What really pisses me off, what really grinds my gears about this game, is there is this Naruto battle where he fights against all of the Jinchuriki. All six of them. Now, you think in a normal fighting game, they just make you fight one each at a time. Fuck no. They make you fight against all six of these guys, three at a time on the battlefield. And at first I was like, oh, this is going to be just like the other, you know, third-person action sequences. It shouldn't be that bad. No, it's fucking mind-numbingly difficult because these guys are constantly throwing shuriken at you, constantly attacking you. And to make matters worse, this is the biggest offense of all. In the single player, during this battle, there is awful lag. There were times I couldn't even figure out what was going on because Naruto was literally floating in the air for a few seconds. And I was like, for Christ's sake, can I just unlock all the characters and play online already? But still... Like I said, if you're a fan of the series, and if you're buying this game, chances are you are, it's the boss battles that you're going to be playing this for, and like I said, they do not disappoint. Some of which that really stick out, the uh, Asuma battle was actually a lot better than the anime and the manga version, and uh, a few others really stick out as well. And you even get to play as Choji fighting against the Ghetto Mazo statue. That's just fucking badass. So now that we have finally slogged through the ultimate adventure mode, we can finally talk about what's really important about these Naruto games, the multiplayer. And that's really why we play these. It's a fighting game, and it's a great chance to play as our favorite Naruto characters. And this gameplay is uh, real similar to the ones that we've seen in the other Ultimate Ninja Storm games. You still get to choose your character, and you still get to choose your two supports. And you can always have a different combination of teams, and there's so many characters in this one, well over 80, that you'll have a ton of combinations to try out. And uh, there are a few other things that have changed and a few things that are different. First and foremost, the awakening system is completely different in this game. If you guys have played the Ultimate Ninja Storm games before, you'd know that they have the awakening system where when your character has very, very low health, they can immediately transform into something much more powerful, such as Naruto transforming into the Kyuubi. In this game, they have something called Instant Awakenings, where even at the very beginning of the match, or even somewhere in the middle, or really wherever you want, you can immediately go into your Awakening. Now, not all of the characters can do this, but a good majority of them can, and this is really cool. So, you can start out a battle with Naruto and immediately transform into QB Chakra Mode, but then you can immediately get rid of it too, so you can sort of conserve your energy, and you have to use it really wisely, because if you use it too often, you're going to have no Chakra to use, and you're just going to end up getting your ass whipped. So there is a little bit of strategy with this brand new system. There's also this uh, breaker thing where you're able to charge up one move in particular. Your character will turn all yellow and they'll start to back up and then they'll ram into the other character and they'll throw them in the air and you can call in your support team. And I haven't really gotten uh, how that works completely down yet, but it looks like it's going to change a lot of the things and how you use your supports. So that's going to be really, really cool. Uh, the online has uh, pretty much everything you'd expect from it before. All the multiplayer stuff is still there. You're going to have your leaderboards, lobbies, matchmaking. There's actually a brand new tournament mode that has been featured. And you're also going to have your ninja info cards and titles as well, which is basically a good way to give yourself a sense of individuality within this giant community. And that's the best thing about the new multiplayer in this one. It's going to build a much better community for the game, I think. And since there's so many new characters in this one, hopefully there will be a little bit more variety in the multiplayer. We're not just going to see a bunch of, you know, QB mode, Chakra Naruto's, and Madara's online. So it seems like it's really good. And uh, new characters in this one, they've added, I think, around 14 brand new characters, which are really, really cool. You're going to have all six of the Jinchuriki characters. You're going to have Darui, you're going to have Hanzo, Mifune, Edo Tensei Nagato, Edo Tensei uh, Itachi, and uh, even Madara in the brand new Renegon Tobi. So there are a ton of new characters to play as, and a ton of other characters even have new costumes. So, example, you're playing in the war, you play as Sakura, you can play in her old outfit, or you can play in her new outfit with her Chunin vest on, which is a nice little touch. My only complaint about the playable characters is the Edo Kages. And I think if you guys have been following the news about this game, you've probably already heard, the Edo Kages are in this game, but they are only in the story mode. And they're not playable. And this confounds me because when you fight them in the story mode, they have a chakra bar, they have a substitution bar, and they clearly have move sets and moves that they're using. And they're not like any other boss battle. And to make matters worse, their boss battles are also really, really easy. So the Edo Kages are not in the game, but they included Madara, so I can't really complain too much. But it would have been nice to really see those in there. But CC2 has confirmed there is going to be DLC for this game. Speaking of DLC costumes, if you actually look on the uh, front cover here, the first uh, runs of this game are going to come with something kind of cool. Apparently there is a Naruto card game I know really nothing about, but you'll see there you got Naruto in a Goku costume, and you actually get to use this in the game when you pick this up, 
which is pretty cool. It's not just an aesthetic change either. Well, it actually is an aesthetic change. It just makes Naruto look like Goku. But when he uses his Rasengan, instead of just hitting the opponent with it like regular, he actually does it like Goku, who do a Kamehameha Blast. It looks kind of cool, you know, and it's kind of fun to play as him. And uh, it's definitely fun seeing other players get butt hurt when you win with that version of Naruto. But uh, in all seriousness, this is a fun Naruto game. I still think it's probably the best Naruto game that's ever been released. It's definitely got some flaws in the Ultimate Adventure mode. Uh, with the fact that you're going to have to slog through a ton of cutscenes, and there are a few characters that were cut, and a lot of them that are in story mode, such as the Seven Swordsmen, King Kaku, Gin Kaku, and of course the Edo Kages who are not playable, and that is kind of a disappointment. But DLC is going to be happening in the future, so make sure and spam CC2's Twitter and let them know that you want those Edo Kages playable. I know I do. So, for video game fans, would I recommend this game? Mm, hell no. That's because the uh, the adventure mode is kind of flawed and they really aren't going to be able to get anything if they don't know who these characters really are. But for Naruto fans, this is pure delicious fan service. You're going to eat up every little minute. All the boss battles look so much so cool and the biggest roster that we've ever had in this series so far. So, Naruto fans, definitely pick this one up. You can get it on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. So if you guys are fans of fighting games and Naruto, you guys need to check this one out. It's really, really awesome. And uh, that pretty much concludes the review on Naruto Shippuda and Ultimate Ninja Storm 3. If you guys have decided to pick this game up and you've played it, how do you guys like it? You can let me know with your comments below. Remember guys, as always, make sure to hit that like button, give this video a thumbs up, it really helps us out a lot. That concludes this review today guys. Super Comic Guru 9000, out.